passed away and didn't make it into the promised land. Even Moses didn't make it into the promised land mm -hmm. because he wasn't obedient at one point. I remember when he got mad and struck the right rock when God told him to say it? That's mm -hmm. he got mad. He missed out on his opportunity. So he got to see it, but he didn't get to go into it. God is just. We are called to follow his commands and do what he has asked us. The Deuteronomy 30, 13, 4 says, The rock, <clears throat> his work is perfect. For all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. Mm -hmm. He's just and upright. Psalm 89, 14. The says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Faithful love and truth go before you. They found him to be a provider. As we've talked about, Philippians 4, 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to what? His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He provides for us. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. He provides for the trees and the grass and the birds and the flowers. He cares much more for you. Amen. He created you in his image. You are called to bear his image. He's going to provide everything that you need. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. They found him to be a good God. He's a good God. Psalm 31, 19 says, How great is your goodness, which you have stored up with those who fear you in the presence of everyone you have acted for those who take refuge in you. Out of his goodness, he becomes a place of refuge for him. Will you be in awe of him? Will you fear him to the point of awe? Psalms 107 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithfulness endures forever. James 1 17, Every good and perfect gift is from above. Come down from the Father, coming down from the Father of life, who does not change like shifting shadows. He wants good for us. Then they saw him to be omnipotent. He's powerful. He is powerful. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, O Lord God. You yourself made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Didn't the Israelites see that? Didn't they experience? They should have gone on in awe knowing that there is nothing, not one thing is difficult for the Lord. Amen. If we but trust him and allow him to work in our lives, we see that nothing is difficult. We even go back all the way to Genesis 1 1. We see his power, right? In the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth. He is all powerful. Why would we doubt the one who created everything? Why would we not walk in faith with the one who created everything? If you have the one who is in charge of everything, holding the world together, he holds the universe together in the palm of his hand. If he is holding it all together, why do we think that we need to take control of situations? Why do we think that we need to have our own plans? Why do we think that we need to have our own desires fulfilled? Why then are we submitting ourselves to the one who is in control, whether you like it or not? He's in control. You can do all that you want. You can try to gather all that you want. You can lift up. You can store up all that you want, try to save up. But at the end of the day, it's all going to have to submit to the one who is in control. And that is the Lord Almighty. He's in control. And they had to see that he was in control and do things his way. They 
saw that he was and is a faithfulness. Psalms 89, 1, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Let that be the song of our hearts that we make known to every generation in our family, after generation after generation, that he is faithful, that he cares for us. I love this one. There's two more here. This one is that he is with us. The experience is present. They had the ark of the covenant, the mercy seat, where God met, dwelled. He came and met with his people. He came and met, and his mercy seat, that was how they connected with him. He was with them, and he went before them in order that the, the waters might be parted. God is with you, He's with us. It says in Genesis 28, 15, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Amen. He's going to be with you. He's not going to leave you. Amen. Church, we have the privilege and the hope that God is with us now. His Holy Spirit is living in us. And we know that the work is not finished until we are with him in glory. Mm -hmm. So that means he's never leaving us. If we put our trust in him, if we accept it and receive the salvation that he's given us through his son, we have hope of eternity. These Israelites experienced that he was with them all the way through. And it's going to remain with you all the way through. Then the last one we see here, I love this because this is my heart's posture. We see that he is worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of praise. Revelation 4, 11. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Psalms 96, 4, for the Lord is great and is, and is highly praised, for he is feared above all gods. Hebrews 13, 15, therefore, through him, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Will you give reverence to the one who has brought you through? Will you give reverence to the one who has sustained you? Will you give reverence to him? Will you give praise to him? Because as Psalms 22 says, we should be, we should be singing this from our lips. But you are holy and thrown on the praises of Israel. He's enthroned on the praises of his people. It says that he inhabits the praises. He's worthy of praise. What has he been to you as you've had to cross over? What has he done for you? I think there's a couple things here that we see in everything as we go through all of this. We see one, that it has always been, it is now, and will always be about God and about his purposes, mm -hmm. and about what he wants, and about his evil. Mm -hmm. Then we also see that we are to be on a mission. We have our mission statement, which is to love God, love people, and reflect Christ. That is true. That is all about the great commission, about going and making disciples. What do you think giving an account is? What do you think telling the story is? It's telling the goodness of our God, the gospel of 
of what he's able to do and what he has done in your life to the generations that come after us. Making disciples of your children and make your children into disciples who make disciples. Make your friends into disciples who make disciples. Share in your family, stretch family, your co-workers, whoever it is. How can you be go and make disciples and be on mission for Christ? We don't just gather to just be gathering on Sundays. We love to do this. This is what we're called to do. We're called to gather the church, but it doesn't stop here. We gather, the Lord fills us and empowers us and equips us to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Sunday is great. Small group is great. We need that in our lives, but it doesn't, if we, if we do all of that and miss the point of reaching out to those who don't know Christ, who haven't heard the truth, who haven't experienced the faithfulness of God, the provision of God in their lives, who don't have recognition of what God has done for them, then we miss it all. God said, go and make disciples. Get into your communities. Be a part. Be a light in the community. Be the beacon on the hill. That is our desire, is to be the beacon on the hill that God has called us to. To spread his truth, his love to one another, and then to those that come into contact. <coughs> Sorry, I had a call. <laughs> but who do you know him to be? What is strain within the fabric of your testimony. Who has he shown himself to be? Now really quick, I need 12 men. 12 people, I'll say people. If you, like, if you can pick up some heavy ladies, you can do it too. I'm sure that you can. Most of you probably can pick up more than, than the men. Than the <laughs> we have 12 over there? All right, y'all got it, look at that. That's, now follow my goodness. I'll do this quick. <laughs> I want you to experience this because the people of Israel were sitting there. They were watching this take place because they had cross. And Joshua had them go and get the stones. You guys can start coming up. Just come on back around or come on this way. It's fine. Come on, man. What's up, y'all? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if every single one of us were to take a stone, take a piece of who we've experienced God to be, and we were to spend our lives reaching out to as many as we could to tell them about that characteristic of who God is. Imagine how many would be affected. Amen. Amen. Imagine how many would be reached. Imagine how many lives would be transformed if we were both willing to pick up the stone and follow through on what God has told us. Now, in a moment here, team, you can come up. Worship team, you can come up too. You're not all busy. 